Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. At the risk of being offensive, I'd say there are none so blind as those who refuse to see. I could maybe see someone ignoring the sunglasses. There are plenty of reasons someone might be working and wearing sunglasses, but an entire dog, particularly a lab-sized dog, and especially one in a special harness, would seem to be hard to overlook. You'd have thought the seeing eye dog was a clue. This happened almost 15 years ago. I'm legally blind, I have been for pretty much forever. We found out about my eye condition when I was 11, and from that point on I had extra classes and programs teaching me how to live life with really poor or no vision. In my senior year of high school, I had one last sort of blind life boot camp. It was pretty simple, with most of the classes being on stuff like cooking, laundry, cleaning, and other stuff. It was mostly geared to helping newly blind people adapt, so I would finish early a lot and wind up going to the grocery store to pick up dinner. At this time, I traveled with my service dog, Mikey, a big black lab. He wore a special harness, and it was pretty clear to anyone with half a brain that he wasn't a normal pet. Usually, classes didn't have any sort of dress code. One day, though, it was self-advocacy day, and we were supposed to do mock job interviews to talk about the subject of when to disclose you have a disability in the job application process. So I and the other students were wearing more professional-looking stuff. I was in a blue button shirt and khakis. I finished early and went to the grocery store to get dinner as usual. I was putting a bag of frozen chicken patties into my basket when I heard a voice behind me. It's about time they made you dress more professional. With what vision I have at the time, I see this person in front of me. She was a bit taller than me, a little heavy, and had gray hair that came down to her neck in a style that reminds me of Little Lad from those Berries and Cream Skittles commercials. I'll call her LL for Little Lady. Me, turning around, sorry, LL. I said, I'm glad they started making you wear more decent clothing here. Most of the time, you look like you got dressed in the dark. Me, I kind of do, LL. Why the hell would you do that? Me. I don't really have a choice. Matching colors isn't my strong suit. By this point, I thought that the sunglasses and seeing eye dog were enough of a clue, and so I started to walk away. It hadn't occurred to me yet that she thought I worked there? LL. What does that mean? Hey, don't walk away from me. I'm not done with you yet. Me. Excuse me? LL. I said get back here. I'm talking to you. Me. I don't want to talk to you anymore. LL proceeds to try to grab me by the wrist that's holding my groceries. I dropped my basket and jerked my arm away hard. I could feel Mikey jump because I was tense and because of the sound of the basket hitting the floor. LL shouting, Ow, you little crap, I'll have you fired. And that's when I realized she thought I worked there. Not the rudeness, not the assault, but the threats to take a job I didn't have. So I started to shout back. Me. Get the F away from me. I don't work here. Don't touch me again. Don't come near me or I'll call the effing cops. It was loud enough that everyone in the echoey store probably heard. All the chatter from the other customers and employees died down pretty quick. LL, carried away by the momentum of her power trip, continues ranting and threatening and following me as I walk away, but keeps her distance. My dog is pulling as hard as he can to get me away from what he thinks is danger, I even left my basket of food behind. At some point, LL ceases her following me, and I left the store without buying anything. I didn't go back to that store again. I don't know who she was or why she felt entitled to being able to harass me, but I hope she choked on whatever she bought there next. Should have called the cops and asked the manager to help you. People assaulting other people should have it on their permanent record. And our second story. Being told to shut up and what happened after. So this was a few years ago when I was still a cashier at a certain blue-themed department store. We offered a no-taxes discount on applicable items to those with a native status card, and to apply this, they needed to present the card at the beginning of the order. We would check it for validity, and the order could begin. Well, one faded day, a couple comes through, maybe mid to late 30s, and they have a medium-sized order, which I process with no problems, no indication of what's to come until I tell them their total. The man says they have a status card, and I tell them that unfortunately they would have needed to declare it at the beginning of the order for me to apply the discount. The woman starts insisting that we can do it for her, that we've done it before, etc., so I call the CSM, customer service manager, 
equivalent of a front-end supervisor, over, explain the situation and ask if there's anything we can do. I still want to help the customer at this point, even if she's been a little rude. The CSM explains that short of erasing the order and scanning it in again, this time with the discount in place, there's nothing to be done. The woman chooses that, and while the CSM is erasing the order, I say in an apologetic tone, sorry, this is why we need you to show us the card at the beginning of the order, by which I meant that it would take even longer for them to be able to leave. Admittedly, this was not the best thing I could have said at that time, but she snapped at me. Not an exact quote, but the gist of what she actually said, I knew that you could do it, so don't be stupid. I said something else, I think something to the effect of, please don't call me that ma'am, to which she replied even more venomously, and although I don't remember the first part of her sentence, I could never forget the second part, maybe it's time for you to shut up. I'd never been told to shut up by a customer before. I'd had my fair share of rude customers before to be sure, and even being sworn at and had had my intelligence insulted, but for some reason being told to shut up like that was the tipping point, because I did shut up. And after they were gone, the man whose order was next asked if I was all right, and all I could do was ask another CSM if I could go to the bathroom, where I promptly burst into tears. When I came out, obviously still quite upset but not crying anymore, the front-end manager told me to take my lunch early. When I came back is when this story takes a turn. Apparently, the manager and yet another CSM had been standing at the front doors watching for this couple to drive by, and when he managed to stop them, went off on them about how they treated me and proceeded to ban them from the store. I hadn't particularly gotten along with my manager before then. He's harmless, just very outgoing and slightly odd personality, but this incident instilled me with a newfound respect for him and a stiffer upper lip around customers. Time to break out the cloning vat for this manager. So rare to find a manager who steps up for their employees these days. And our next story. How I almost got fired. I worked as a hostess during college at a big chain restaurant that had a huge staff. My location was the management training location for our region, so we had a lot of new managers cycling in and out. Most of them were promoted servers or bartenders from different locations and had no management experience prior to this. I never loved working at this location as a lot of the new managers were on a little bit of a power trip. Kind of comes with the territory as new managers. So after a year of being berated for issues that were completely out of my control, I finally got a new job and put in my two weeks. I handed it directly to our GM, thanked her for everything, and was set to leave on good terms with the company. Fast forward two weeks and I received a notification that my schedule was set for the following week. I called the restaurant and reminded the on-duty manager that I was no longer an employee and they would need to put someone else on to fill my spot. They apologized and moved on. Another two weeks pass and I get the same notification. I once again call the restaurant to remind them they again apologize. Before I hang up, I say something along the lines of, Hey, make sure you make a note of this because I'm going out of the country next week and I won't be able to call if this happens again. They agree and we end it there. So this is where it gets dramatic. I'm on vacation in Spain and I get an angry string of texts from a new manager at the restaurant reminding me that I'm five minutes late and if I don't arrive in the next five minutes, I'll be written up. I text back saying, sorry, I know you're new, but I put in my two weeks over a month ago. I don't know why I'm still on the schedule. New manager replies saying that although that may be the case, it's absolutely unacceptable that I'm missing a shift I'm scheduled for, and if I don't come in, I'll be written up and in bad standing with the company. I respond explaining that I am out of the country, and although I'm sorry for their situation, I am no longer an employee, and there's nothing I can do to help. I then receive a string of at least 15 messages back to back, and let me tell you, they were the most unhinged messages I've ever read. They went from calling me unprofessional to an arrogant brat. Mind you, I never worked with this woman. She started after I left. She accuses me of lying and being lazy, saying that if you quit a job, you need to give notice, and I should be ashamed of what I've done to the restaurant. Of course, I took screenshots of the conversation and sent them to one of the other managers. Last I heard, she was suspended and then demoted back to her original position at a different location. Definitely for the best. You saved a number of people at some other restaurant from having to deal with her. Well done. And our last story. 
Rich guy wants to stop kids from having fun for no reason, complains to HOA. A little background. My friend lives in a gated community. He's on the HOA board since he's in construction and handles the community's needs if needed. The houses there range from middle class to eye crap money. I'm talking see-through infinity pool so you can see butts at eye level, fully equipped four or five car garages, a two-bed space for the maid, and of course seating areas suspiciously convenient for doing drugs. These houses are usually located by themselves, no neighbors, at cul-de-sac. This means the road is usually free of traffic and pretty safe for children to play, which is exactly what kids did one summer or any other holiday came along. They would ride bikes, race, and do other kid stuff. A couple lived at one of these houses, let's call them Mr. Walton and Mrs. Walton. They were grade A jizz muffins. They'd throw parties every weekend, it almost always resulted in crap being thrown on the street, burnt rubber from cars smoking their tires and so on. HOA cited them many a time, but they would just pay the fines and carry on. Mr. Walton and his wife never liked kids playing in front of his house. No idea why. It's not like they could hear the kids since the front lawn was pretty expansive and they had a gate. So Mr. and Mrs. Walton would complain to the HOA citing kids' safety, and my friend would go talk to them. Keep in mind that my friend's a homeowner too. It'd go like this. Friend, I'm here to talk to you about the complaint. Mr. Walton, yes, when is the damn HOA going to take care of it? Friend, I actually want to discuss the issue and maybe we can find another solution. Mr. Walton, just do it, okay? Friend, but we cannot ask parents to stop their kids from playing and we can't stop kids from playing on this street since it's the safest area they can play in while being close to their own houses. Mr. Walton, it's not safe for them to be playing out there. What if I hit a kid? I don't want the liability. So just take care of it, okay? Friend, Mr. Walton, Think of it as kids' safety. Friend. Friend. I'm sorry, we just cannot do it. Even if we did, we cannot enforce it. Mr. Walton. I'll be speaking to the HOA's president. Friend says goodbye and leaves. They would calm down for a few weeks and then complain and complain again. Nothing would change their mind about complaining and demanding the kids be banned from playing. Finally, after a year of this, the HOA caved and decided to put out a rule that kids are not supposed to ride bikes on the roads for safety reasons. Enter my friend, let's call him Frank, and his malicious compliance. Frank knew Mr. Walton had an expensive car that he loved to show off. This car rode really low, think three to four inches. Frank convinced the HOA that the rule would never stick and the only option was to install speed bumps, speed breakers, speed cushions, traffic calming devices, slow your roll broski devices on the left and right sides of the cul-de-sac part where Mr. Walton's gate started. The maximum allowed speed hump height by law is four inches. Guess which ones Frank decided to install? The HOA still received complaints from Mr. Walton, only now the complaints are about the speed humps catching the bottom of his favorite car. Mr. Walton wants them removed and says it's damaging his cars and the cars of people who drive to his house for the weekend parties. HOA responds and says, we cannot do it in the interest of kids' safety. Read, think of it as kids' safety, F-face. Mr. Walton had to drive his low-riding cars diagonally. Kids still played between the speed bumps, using them as boundaries for their games. HOA needs to have a meeting without the Walton family. Agree for six months to trial doubling fines for rule violation. Everyone starts being really careful, and suddenly, Nutsack's paying many, many tens of thousands of dollars a week to the HOA. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.